What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me. Today's tutorial is this ferris wheel design. There's a link in the description down below to the palette you're going to need as well as any links to any brushes that I may have used in this design. If you're new here I post Procreate content every single week so if you'd like some tutorials to follow along hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell. And as always a massive shout out to my patrons I'll throw their names up on the screen now. If you'd like some exclusive content every single month as well as access to our exclusive Facebook group and benefits on my Discord server hit the link in the description down below and go ahead and show your support. And with all that said, let's get started. So as always, let's create a new canvas. We're gonna hit the plus icon and my canvas is 2,500 by 2,500. And once we're in, we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna to go to our background color. I'm gonna switch it out to this very dark blue in the top left hand corner. Now let's go to our layers. Let's, on this blank layer, let's switch our color to white. And then let's go to our brush library. And then we're gonna switch out to under calligraphy, we're gonna use the monoline brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate the same as I did in my previous tutorial, where we're gonna draw some S's across the screen, and you're just gonna create some nice sort of lines within the night sky. And start somewhere in the top right hand corner and just create some little S's across the screen like so. And then you repeat the line on the other side of it. So we end up then dragging and dropping our color into this gap here. And then let's just do the same underneath, but we make this one a little bit thinner. So we just come across here like so, and then just keep this one nice and close. And something like that when you drag the color in is pretty good. Now you can then go to your cursor and then the uniform option and maybe just scale it up a little bit until you end up with quite a bit of the context in the center there, like mine. And then I'm gonna go to my layers. I'm gonna change the layer style to overlay, which will let a lot of the blue through in the background. And then we're just gonna lower the opacity down until we can barely see the lines. So something roughly around about 25% looks pretty good to me. While we're working on our background, let's go ahead and add in our stars. So let's create a new layer. And then with white still selected and with the link to the stipple collection that's in the description down below, we're gonna find that stipple collection. And under the stipple collection, we're gonna use the option of the light one. And you wanna start your brush size quite large at say roughly around about 80 to 70% and tap away to add in some nice big stars in the background here. You don't wanna to add too many though. And then reduce your brush size down to roughly around about 50% and then just tap away, filling in some of the gaps. And then let's reduce the brush size one more time to about Let's go down to about 15% and then just tap away in some of the gaps where you feel you've not got any context. Maybe you left a few big gaps like I have here on the right hand side. And then just filling in all those gaps. Not too heavily, but not too like little so it's too lightly spread. Until you get some sort of night sky glow like that. So now let's add in a glow down here for the background. So let's go to our colors and let's switch it out to the second purple in the collection here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our monoline brush again. So under our brush library, we're gonna go back to calligraphy and select the monoline. We're gonna make this line as chunky as possible. And then on that new layer, we're just simply gonna draw a line straight across the screen like so and hold your pen at the end and pop your finger on the screen and you'll get a perfectly horizontal line. And then all we're gonna do is then simply blur that out. So we're gonna grab our gauge and blur and layer under adjustments. And we're gonna drag from left to right and just blur that upwards until we end up with something very, very soft. So for me, I've gone for roughly about 30%. And then we're gonna go back to our layers. We're gonna swipe it to the left and we're gonna duplicate it. And then we're gonna to go to our layer options. I'm just gonna scroll down until we get the option of add, which will really start to punch that out a little bit more. Now we'll leave that for a second. We may come back and adjust the height of it shortly, but we need to add a new layer in front of it. So let's create that new layer. Let's go and create a new one. Let's go to our colors. And let's switch it out to this very dark color here in the first column, the second color. And then first of all, we're gonna keep with our monoline brush and we're gonna draw a straight line across the screen. So we're gonna go straight across again and hold your pen and pop your finger on the screen to get a perfectly horizontal line. And then drag and drop your color in like so. And now we're gonna to go to our brush library and we're gonna use the Char Grass 3 that was in the African Shroud collection of brushes that I've popped in the description down below. And for this one, what we're gonna do is my brush size is set to roughly, let's go to 25%. 
This brush will repeat itself quite a lot. So what we have to do is, is vary the sizes and go up and down just to try and disperse some of the lines. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is quite literally just go across the line horizontally and just add in some grass. So now it'll really repeat itself. But what we're trying to do is we're just trying to build up the different layers of the grass every time we do this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some sort of like banking on either side. So in a circular motion, I'm just gonna keep drawing in the grass and then I'm gonna tap away to add some bigger ones in between until I end up with some sort of like small bank over here on the right hand side. So I'm tapping away and then I'm bringing the brush up and tapping so that I can add in some extra lines in here that gets rid of the repetition within the brush. And then let's do the same on the other side. So we're just gonna sort of start to draw in that bank and then you can start to tap away and add some a little bit further up, further down, just to break that grass up. And then let's have a look down here, see if we can break this line up a little bit more as well. Let's reduce the brush size down to maybe 15%. And then zooming in, we can add some smaller bits of grass, which will really start to break that line up and give us our nice grassy little bank here in front. So all we wanna end up with is something like that. It's a nice curved bank at the bottom. And then this background color for the moment can stay as is. We may come back and increase the glow shortly afterwards. Let's get started on our main focal point for today, which is our Ferris wheel that's gonna sit in the very middle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our layers. Now we need to keep this grass layer at the very top. So we're gonna go underneath it by one. And we're gonna create two new layers. And then we're gonna swipe on the two layers until both of them are highlighted and group them together. This will make life a lot easier as we get further down the road. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to add in all the different shapes for this. So now what we'll do is we're gonna select a different color so we can just see the design that we're gonna create. So let's just select white to make life easier. So let's double tap in the top left hand corner. And then we're gonna go back to our brush library. We are gonna go all the way back down under calligraphy. And we're gonna continue with the monoline brush. Let's change our brush size now to roughly 30%. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by drawing a circle in the middle of the screen and we're gonna keep increasing all the different shapes until we end up with our Ferris wheel. So let's draw a circle in the middle of the screen. Pop, hold your pen at the end to get a perfect eclipse and pop your finger on the screen to get a perfect circle. And then drag and drop the white into there. Now let's grab our cursor first of all. And let's make sure snapping is turned on. And just to make life easier as well, to make sure everything's nice and uniformed, let's make sure we pop it perfectly in the center of the design. Now we wanna try and find the vertical orange line and the horizontal one as well. So we'll end up with two orange lines running straight through the design like that. So now that we know that that's perfectly central, we can go ahead and create all the shapes around it. So let's use the blank layer we've got here and carry on. So let's draw now another circle around this one here. Hold your pen again to get a perfect eclipse and pop your finger on the screen to get a perfect circle. And let's do something roughly this sort of size. And let's grab our cursor and also position that perfectly on those axes. So now we've got the center of our Ferris wheel. Let's create the larger parts around the outside. Now I'm actually gonna grab both of mine and just scale them down a little bit. And then this will should be a little bit better going forward in terms of proportions for the design. So I've actually scaled mine down and you can see the center now. And I'm gonna decrease my brush size to 20% now going forward for the rest of the lines. So let's create another new layer and drag it underneath in our little group here. And then let's create the first of the larger wheels. So let's go around, let's draw a circle, pop your finger on the screen as well as holding your pen at the end. And this is the second out of the big wheels. Let's grab our cursor and then again, perfectly position that in the center of the design till we get both the orange lines running through. And let's go for one more. Let's create another new layer. And let's draw another circle around the outside, leaving a bit of a gap this time. Pop your finger on the screen and you wanna end up with a gap roughly around about that sort of size looks pretty good. And again, let's grab our cursor and position that nicely in the center. Now we wanna go ahead and add in the spokes for the middle of the Ferris wheel as well. So let's now go to our spanner. Let's go to canvas and edit drawing guide. Let's edit the drawing guide. And then let's go to symmetry. And then under symmetry, we can go to options here and let's pick radial. 
and then let's just change the color so you guys can see on my screen to white and if I hit done we end up with a radial reflection here. Now because we've already done the hard work of positioning this perfectly in the center you shouldn't need to move this at all and everything will nicely now you know, work together we shouldn't have to make any adjustments so all those little things we did as we made our way here will help us out now. So let's go to our layers let's create a new layer let's also drag both these circles above it so we end up with our little blank layer at the bottom and then on that blank layer we want to tap on it and we want to turn on drawing assist and now let's reduce our brush size down to 10 percent and what we're going to do is we're going to simply draw straight up this line here just like the radial grid here and meet in the center if you pop your finger on the screen as well you get it nice and straight and into the center and now let's do the same on the other line so i'm going to rotate my canvas here so i can see nice and straight i'm going to draw and pop my finger on the screen until we meet up in the middle and now the nice trick you can do here let's go to our layers let's swipe on this layer and duplicate it and then if we go to our cursor and we grab the little green handle at the top here we want to just rotate this until we hit the 22 and a half degrees mark and then we end up with all of our spokes nicely perfectly gapped between one another for our ferris wheel so we can actually go ahead now and merge those two layers together and then the final step is to add in the big legs that are going to hold this up so let's go to our layers let's create another new layer let's drag it underneath the spokes just to keep everything nice and tidy and sometimes it will jump out of the group that's why I grabbed the bottom layer beforehand and dragged it above so they'll stay in the group. You want to make sure you've got this little indent here. And then let's make sure we're also on this layer as well. And then changing our brush size of the mono line to 40%, we're going to draw a line straight out of here. And if you pop your finger on the screen, it will, if you did the angle correctly, it will go in increments of, I'm not sure what the degrees is, but as long as you go one and then two, that's the angle that we're going to want for today. And then let's go to our layers. Let's swipe on this layer and duplicate it. And then let's go to our cursor and let's flip this one horizontally. And then just drag that across until they you get those blue lines there that let us know we're in the same height as the other leg on the other side. And then let's merge those two together. So now we've got the outline of our Ferris wheel. Let's go ahead and add in the little cabins or the little pods that are gonna be on the Ferris wheel and then we can duplicate that shape all the way around as well. So let's go to our layers now. Now within this Ferris wheel group, let's create another group. So let's double tap at the top here to create two new layers and let's swipe on both and group them together. And what we wanna do is we wanna create two shapes really and then another layer for the sort of bars that hold the whole thing together. So I'm gonna start over here on the left hand side so you can kind of get an idea for shape and proportion. But on each one of these spokes, we have to add in a pod. So we have to bear in mind the height of it. Let's also go to our drawing guide, first of all, and let's edit that. And let's then edit the drawing guide. Let's change the symmetry option to vertical. And let's just drag this over here on the left hand side into the space that we're just going to use for the moment to create our little pods. And then let's make sure our layer that we're about to use is turned on with the drawing assist. And we want to look at the height of the area to our right hand side. And I want to create some sort of like straight line to start with. And let's actually reduce our brush size. Let's go down to, let's go down to 10%. We want to create a straight line across. We want to essentially create the top bun of a burger. So we go across like that. And then we go around and then meet up at the top. And then fill in that gap like so. Now that might be a little bit too big for me at the moment. But I want to just make sure that the shapes are there and everybody can see them. So then let's go to the second layer out of the two. Let's also make sure that is drawing assisted turned on. And now let's draw in the pod as well. So now let's first of all start with reflecting the same sort of width. So let's draw a straight line across like so. And then let's go down, hold in my brush down to create some perfect lines. And then let's create the bottom half to match up to the top. So that upside down burger look like that. And then drag and drop the color in like so. And then let's just get rid of a little piece here just so it looks like a door. So let's go to our eraser. Let's go to calligraphy and under monoline, let's reduce the brush size all the way down. Let's go to let's go to 4%. And we can erase in the center here. So let's draw a straight line across because you can do that with your eraser as well. Put your finger on the screen like this. And then just curve upwards and round 
like that. So we create like a little S and then let's just erase this gap here until we end up with something like that. You could go ahead and then round that off even more if you wanted to, like so, till we end up with that little pod sort of look to it. And now looking at the size, it will need to be scaled down slightly. But before we do that, let's create one more new layer. Let's drag this bottom one above. And let's also turn this layer on for drawing assist. And let's draw in two straight lines here and here on our screen. So let's switch back to our brush. Let's go down to 5% and just draw a straight line down like so. And then that's our sort of bars that hold the roof part to the bottom pod. And then we can go ahead and let's tap on the group and we can even collapse it if you wanted to. But we can grab our cursor and with the uniform option selected, let's scale it down and have a look at how that's going to look when we put it into position because this is roughly where it's going to sit. And for me, that looks pretty bang on. I think maybe we could go down a little bit further. Let's go down to a height of 145 pixels there. That's good. And we'll leave that like so. So now when I zoom out, we've got the basics of our shapes that we're going to need to go forward with this. What we're going to do is we're going to add in all the highlights for the Ferris wheel first, and then we're going to see how that will affect our little pod. We'll shade in and highlight our pod first, and then we'll duplicate it many times around the outside to save some time. And then we'll add in the fireworks and then the lighting onto our pods. So let's go to our Ferris wheel first of all, and we're going to want to create some sub highlights. Now what I mean by that is all the lighting in a second is going to be coming up from the bottom. So we want to start to add in where those highlights are going to go. Now the best way to do this is if I go to the center here in this center circle in the middle. First of all I'm going to tap on it, I'm going to use the option of alpha lock. And I want to fill it with the correct color going forward. Which is actually this very dark color here. So we're going to use this same color that we used for the grassy layer here. I'm going to tap on this circle and we're going to use the option of fill. Now I did this on purpose because I know, even though it's, I know it's a perfect circle and you could drag and drop the colour in, these other ones are a bit trickier. So we're going to use that same technique going forward every time. I want to create a process for you so you can copy and paste it for each one basically. Let's then swipe on this layer and duplicate it. We're going to then go to our colours. We're going to grab our bright purple colour here. So the second one in our group of purples. And then we're going to go to the second one out of the two of our black circles and we're going to tap on that now and use the option of fill. Now you won't see a visual change but what we're now going to do is we're going to use the black glare. We're going to tap on that and use the option of clipping mask. So now this is clipped to the purple version underneath it. And then we're going to grab our cursor and we're going to move this up a couple of pixels. And what you want to end up with is if I zoom all the way in we end up with a big circle but underneath in the bottom edge we end up with a lovely little under highlight. And that's what we're going to go for with all the different layers within this design. So let's go and repeat that process now for the ring underneath. And what we can do to save on our layers, let's pinch those two together because that's now done. And let's move on to the next layer. So the next one is this ring here. So we're going to want to tap on this layer and use the option of alpha lock. We're going to want to go to our colors and change it to the dark color here. And then we're going to go back to our layers. Let's tap on that and use the option of fill. And then we're going to swipe on this to the left and use the option of duplicate. And we are going to then go to the second one out of the two. Let's go to our colors again and switch it out to the purple in the middle row. Let's go back to our layer. Let's tap on it and use the option of fill. Now again, we won't see any visual change, but let's tap on this black circle first and use the option of clipping mask. And then again, let's grab our cursor and just drag upwards ever so slightly until we end up with two highlights this time. So we end up with the under highlight here and the inner under highlight up here. Saves an awful lot of time and you end up with a really cool effect as well. So let's repeat that process again going forward. The only thing we have to do is then pinch those two together because we're done with them and continue on. So the next circle we have is the big one around the outside. So same process. Let's tap on the layer first of all and use the option of alpha lock. Let's go to our colors and select the dark color here on the second row. Let's go back to our layer, tap on it and use the option of fill. I'm going to swipe on that layer and use the option of duplicate. And then we are going to go to the bottom one out of the two. We're going to go back to our colors. We're going to pick this purple in the middle. Then we're going to go back to our layers. Tap on the second one out of the two, use the option of fill, and then again tap on the black circle above 
and use the option of clipping mask and then grab our cursor and because this one's quite thin you only want to move it up ever so slightly and then you'll end up with those lovely inner and under highlights like so and everything's really starting to come together now in terms of the lighting it will really bring it to life and then pinch those two together now that we're done let's repeat the process then again so let's go to the white circle now which is the inner one let's tap on it and use the option of alpha lock let's go back to our colors for the second black color here this dark color let's go to that ring again let's tap on it and use the option of fill let's swipe that layer to the left and use the option of duplicate and then on the second one out of the two, we're gonna go back to our colors. We're gonna pick the purple in the middle row. We're gonna go back to our layers. Let's tap on that layer and use the option of fill. And then with the black circle above, let's tap on that and use the option of clipping mask. And then now we budget up a couple of pixels like so. And then we end up with our highlights for that all sorted as well. Let's then pinch those two together and let's move on to the spokes now that are going around the outside or the inside as well. So let's tap on that layer and use the option of alpha lock. Let's switch the color out to the dark color that we need. Let's go back to our colors, our layers even. Let's tap on the layer and use the option of fill. Let's swipe on that layer and use the option of duplicate. And then the bottom one out of the two, we're gonna go back to our colors. We're gonna switch it out to this purple. And then we're gonna go back to the layer. I'm gonna tap on it and use the option of fill. And then we're going to go to our dark layer. Let's tap on it and use the option of clipping mask. And now let's budget up a few pixels like so. And then again, let's pinch those two together to save on our layers. And then the final one is the legs for the Ferris wheel. So let's go ahead on that one. Let's do the same process. Let's tap on it and alpha lock it. Let's go back to our colors. Let's go to our base color here, the dark one. Let's tap on it and use the option of fill. Let's swipe on that layer and use the option of duplicate. The bottom layer out of the two, we're gonna go back to our colors. We're gonna switch it out to the second purple. We're gonna go back to the layer. We're gonna use the option of fill. And then we're gonna tap on the one above and use the option of clipping mask. And then we're gonna grab our cursor and then just nudge it up a couple of pixels like so. And now we have fully highlighted our Ferris wheel in terms of the actual main body of it. And we can go ahead and have a look now at our little pod here. So let's also go back to our layers now. And we ended up with these two layers here for the glow in the background. I'm gonna swipe on both of them. I'm gonna grab my cursor. I'm gonna use the freeform option. I'm just gonna drag it upwards with the blue node at the top and create more of a glow down here. That's all I wanna do. It's just a little bit of an increase in the background here. So I've come up to roughly about here instead. Just want to add in some more purple there. And then let's start to have a look at our pod as well. So let's go to our layers and let's find the group that we created for it. Now let's actually grab our cursor. I'm going to position it at the bottom here so you can get a perfect idea for the look that we're going to achieve and where the lighting's coming from. And I may even scale it down ever so slightly one more time. Like so. So. This is our pod. Let's go ahead first of all and open up the group. Now the black, the white lines here up and down, we want to change them to black or the darker color. So let's tap on it and use the option of alpha lock. Let's switch our color back out to the dark blue here that we've been using quite repetitively and tap on it and use the option of fill. And now that's the correct color for that. And now let's look at the top and bottom pieces and we want to then add in the correct color for that too. And for this one, I am gonna use the same highlight purple that we used before. And let's go to the layer now, and we can simply just drag and drop this in to position. And likewise, let's go to the pod part, and let's drag and drop the correct color in there, like so. So let's actually start to highlight this in here, and we're gonna use an airbrush. We're gonna be very, very light with it, but we're gonna be also very small in terms of what we're actually adding is gonna be quite small in detail. So let's go to our brush library. Let's go to the airbrushing section and use the soft brush. And my brush size is set all the way down to 2% at the moment. And let's go to our colors and let's switch it out to the highlight color here that we've got. So the slightly lighter purple. And on the pod part, I'm gonna tap on it. I'm gonna use the option of alpha lock. And then all I'm gonna do is just highlight the bottom edge here like so. And you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create an underglow. 
And to be honest with you, that's actually pretty good. I'm not gonna touch it too much there. But what I'm now gonna do is just go back to my colors and switch out, first of all, to the dark purple. So for this, we wanna go straight across the design and just start to gradient in some darker purple, leaving a little bit of the original color there. So very dark, you can see at the top here, just leaving in a little bit there. And then we're gonna go back to our colors and let's switch out to our shading color that we've been using quite a lot. And then we just wanna edge around the top the little pod, also around here as well, the sort of entrance to it, and then bring down the shadows a little bit more as well until we end up with something like that. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm gonna go back to our layers and let's repeat the process now for the top part of the pod. So while we're already on our shading color, I'm gonna go straight in with that. I'm gonna tap on the layer, make sure it's alpha locked. And with our shading color selected, it's gonna stroke around the top edge of our little pod here. Adding in quite a bit. And we can actually just use the original color that we had underneath as the highlight color if we wanted to. Or we can just go back to our colors and switch out to this color here in our purples, the lightest one, and just add in a tiny little stroke here at the bottom. So we've added basically a nice little solid line there. And then when we zoom out, our pod is nicely highlighted with a lovely under shadow. And that's gonna be pretty vital in terms of where some of the lighting's coming from for now. And then we'll add in the firework colors on top of it as well afterwards. So that's good with me in terms of the pod. I'm actually now gonna go ahead and duplicate that all the way around our Ferris wheel. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in the extra pieces of lighting. So let's first of all go to our group. And for the sake of our layers as well, we're gonna to wanna to collapse this group down and we're gonna to wanna to flatten it together. So at this point, if you had any more changes you wanted to make, for example, I could go in here and I could maybe even continue to darken up this pod even more. I could maybe switch back to my shading color and maybe just darken this pod up a little bit more if I wanted to, but just making sure I get that nice underglow. But now I've made that change, I can go back to my group, I can tap on it, I can use the option of flatten, and that's all been merged now into one layer. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and duplicate that all the way around. So let's swipe on it, duplicate it. And while we've got two, just to keep life nice and easy, let's swipe on the two of them and group them together. And then this one here that we just duplicated, let's grab our cursor and move it around. So every time there is a spoke, we are gonna add in a new pod. So we're gonna pop it here in front, like so. And then swipe that to the left and duplicate. Grab your cursor and move it around as well. And continue that until you add in all your pods all the way around the design. So we're, we've got a few to get through here. So if you're enjoying the video up until now, please drop a like down below, it helps the channel out an awful lot and it sends my videos out to more people. And then we're also gonna continue this all the way around the top edge. Swiping them to the left and duplicating till we add them in all the way across. Now you will notice if I do this one more time up here, eventually I'll start to hit some blue lines which if I zoom out, is actually the system trying to tell me, Joel, you've placed it perfectly in the same straight line above uh, angle as the one you placed below. And that's perfect, which means I know I've got it in the correct position. And then let's now look at how many we've got so far. We've done this outer edge here. Let's leave this pod at the bottom on its own. So we're gonna go through all our layers. This one here is the individual one. So this is our pod here at the bottom. Every other pod, we're gonna swipe on every single one we're gonna then merge them together by pinching them together. I'm gonna swipe on that to the left and duplicate it. And then on one of the layers, it doesn't really matter which one, let's grab our cursor and let's flip it horizontally and drag it across until we position them in the same position and we get the same blue bars. So let's know we're perfectly across in terms of height and we can just make sure that they all link up to our Ferris wheel nicely. And that saves a lot of time. Let's also then grab our little individual pod here, swipe that to the left and duplicate it and drag it straight up into position. Make sure you get those blue bars. You'll also get the orange one because everything's nicely centered. And then just take a look, make sure you're happy with them. Maybe there'll be a couple of adjustments you might want to make, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with mine. And merge all of those layers together into one. And that is coming along nicely. Let's add in the lighting that's coming up from the bottom, and then we'll add in the fireworks, and then the final nice little bits of lighting touches that will really bring this together. So now we can go ahead and collapse our Ferris wheel group down. 
because we're done with that for a second. Let's go to our layers and the one underneath is our glow. So let's create a new layer above that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our, let's go for, let's go for this color first, the middle purple. Let's go to our brush library and we're going to go to calligraphy and monoline. And we are going to go ahead and just draw in an angular fashion, some sort of beam up into the sky, roughly like that. And then we're going to create a corresponding beam as well. So what you want to do is you want to start, if I turn the grass layer off so you can see, this is what I've ended up with. Let's create a gap between the two and then create another line up. So something like, something like that's pretty good to end up with that nice cone. And what you want to do is just link them together. Likewise at the top, do not worry about this top line. We're going to get rid of it in a second. And then drag and drop your color in like so. So now let's go back to our layer and turn on the grass so we can keep the illusion of what's happening here. And then we're going to go to our brushes and our eraser. And we're going to go to the airbrushing section and use the soft brush. I'm going to make the brush size roughly around about, let's go for 40%, that might be too big. But what you're going to do is you're going to start in circular motion, fade that top line out and then fade down slightly and continue down until you're basically taking a bit of the color out and you end up with a little bit of a sort of very solid part down here, but you erase quite a lot of the glow on the other side. So at the top here, so that was in a circular motion and I just made my way down erasing part of that. And let's, while we're on this layer, before we continue on, let's tap on it and use the option of alpha lock. And I'm gonna to wanna to go to my colors now and the very light purple. And then going back to my brushes, and the soft airbrush under airbrushing and increase the brush size. I just wanna make sure this bottom edge is a little bit brighter. So in a circular motion, I'm just punching out this sort of lighter purple down here. And that's our beam. Let's just simply move it outwards a little bit more. And let's also turn off the door drawing guide because we don't need that on at the moment. That's good with me. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is let's go to that layer. Let's swipe on it and use the option of duplicate. Let's go to our cursor, let's flip it horizontally and drag it all the way across to the other side. And you wanna get the blue bars to let you know that you are in the perfect height of the previous one that you just created. So I think I can get the blue bar here at the bottom. And don't worry about your positioning too much. I think as long as you sort of somewhat keep it symmetrical, I know I've got a bigger gap over here, but I'm doing that on purpose at this point. I'm just trying to make sure I get the blue lines running through the bottom. And then before we go ahead, we're just gonna quickly duplicate that layer one more time because we're gonna use it in a second. Let's just turn it off for a second and come back to it. And then these two here that we had that are still turned on, let's pinch those two together. And then we're gonna grab our cursor. And again, just make sure everything's nicely aligned. Make sure we get that perfect orange line down the middle of the design to let you know it's nice and symmetrical. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. Let's swipe on it and use the option of duplicate. And then we're gonna to go to the option of color dodge, which will really start to punch this color out now. So what we kind of wanna do is, is look at the bottom layer and lower the color down ever so slightly, the opacity anyway. So let's lower both of them down to 30%. And we should end up with something quite nice and subtle, but we should have brought some nice pinks in here, which will nicely match the color tone a bit more. So what I did there was I dropped both layers down to 30% and the top one is set to color dodge. So the bottom one here is set to 30. Now a second ago I asked you to duplicate a layer just in case we're gonna use it in a second and we're gonna go back to that now and use it. So let's go to that layer, let's turn it on and it should be still over here on the right. Let's grab our cursor. Let's first of all scale it down and rotate that and we're gonna go for an angle and I'll get you the angle. We're gonna go for an angle of, let's find something that we like, move it into position a bit more. Let's go for 28.7 degrees on that one. And then let's swipe back to the left and duplicate it. And we're gonna flip it so it goes on the other side. So on the new one, we're gonna go to our cursor, flip horizontal, drag that over until we hit the blue line at the bottom there to make sure we're nice and symmetrical to the other one. And then somewhat make sure it's, you know, the gaps are basically the same, but just as we did before, we're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna pinch the two together and then we're gonna grab our cursor and just make sure it's perfectly in the center until we get that orange line. 
And then on this one, all we're going to do is lower the opacity down so it's not so punchy and doesn't add too much more. So we're going to lower that down to 30%, but we're not going to duplicate it like the one in front. This one's slightly further back in our design. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the editing of the drawing guides to add in some really cool fireworks in the sky. So let's create a new layer and let's actually create another one as well so we can group these together nicely. So swipe on both of them and group. And then on this one here, let's go to our colors and let's switch first of all to white. Let's go to our brush library and use the option under calligraphy. You can even use the monoline brush if you want to or we can use the script brush at the bottom here which I'm going to use and my brush size is going to be set to about 10%. We're going to go to our canvas and we're going to go to our edit drawing guide, edit it again. We're going to go to options and we're going to use the radial again. And let's position it up at the top where we're going to need it, just in position for a moment. It doesn't particularly matter too much, but in a space there that we can use for our firework. Let's hit done and then Zooming in, we're going to use all these axes to then create our nice repetitive fireworks. So let's go to our layer. Let's tap on it and use the option of drawing assist. And then what we're going to do is, I like to draw along the lines. It tends to help a little bit. We're going to create some sort of teardrop. So we're going to go around and then link at the top like so. And then in the gaps, we're then going to draw in some other content. So maybe we rotate the canvas and we draw in some maybe bigger ones here. And then fill the gap in like so. And then in all the other gaps, we can start to maybe put some dashes in here, like so. And then these are our firework explosions. So something like that is pretty good straight away. I'm pretty happy with that one. So let's now go to our layer. Let's turn it off for a moment. We'll come back and use it in a second. Let's go to the empty layer that we created before. Let's switch our color out to the red next. And then go back to your layer and just make sure that the layer is drawing assisted. And then maybe we do a different design on this one. You don't want to make them too repetitive to one another. So you could do something like a little dot and then a little sort of rounded bit at the top, almost like a little baseball bat. And then for this one, we'll just add in some dashes. So something like that and like that. And maybe we end up with some little ones out here, but we end up with a different firework to the one we just created. And then by all means, keep your layers turned on if you want to, and then drag the cursor away so that you can see what you did previously. So if I drag all of these two out of the way, like here, I can see what I did before. And now when I go to my group of layers here and create a new one, I'm gonna switch it to the final color, which is the yellow. And then I can see what I did on those ones. And on that layer, let's also make sure it's drawing assisted too. And then let's try and avoid repeating the process of these. So maybe I need to start working on some sort of smaller sparks in here. So something like this, something around about that shape. And then using the line again, maybe we draw out something like that and something like that too. And making sure just to add in some dashes in there. Let's make sure they're pretty solid by pressing a little bit harder. And this one looks like it's gonna be pretty repetitive in terms of like a bigger explosion. And then let's just disperse that shape a little bit more by adding some extra dashes out there. So I've got three very different looking fireworks, but you can use the radial glow there just to create whatever design you want. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use all of these to then start to position our night sky and then use the colors to then highlight our Ferris wheel. So let's go back to our actions and turn off the drawing guide because we don't need it for any more of that content. And then we want to position where we want our colors first of all. So first thing I want to do is I want to grab the yellow one, which I should still be on. I want to position it over here in this top left hand corner really of the Ferris wheel. I want to go to my white one now and then grab the cursor for that and then position that right above our design. And I'm going to grab the red one and then position that over here on the right hand side. But try and avoid your fireworks sort of matching up to each other height wise and width wise. You wanna make sure that they're on different levels to one another. So I really like my red one. So I'm gonna to go to my layers, swipe on that and use the option of duplicate. I'm gonna grab my cursor. I'm gonna position it somewhere over here and scale it down. So it's we basically want these three to be the main focus. And I'm gonna position that somewhat here, like so. 
and then I'm going to grab my yellow one and repeat the process. Swipe that to the left and duplicate it. Go to my cursor, drag it over here and then scale that down. Now you could go ahead and create five individual fireworks if you want to, but I'm going to just repeat the ones I've already got and scale them down so again it's not too prominent. And that is roughly how I want them to be nicely laid out so that they don't sit on the same line as one another and they're also pretty different in terms of scale. I just want to increase the size of the red one on the right hand side, that one there, and grab my cursor and then uniform that up a little bit more. So they're in position now, ready to go. Let's create some nice glows from them. So once you're happy with your position of your fireworks, you're going to want to go ahead and merge the layers together. Let's swipe on that layer and use the option to duplicate. And then underneath that layer, we're going to want to go to the option of Gaussian Blur under Adjustments and Layer. Let's create a little blur first. So let's go for 6%. And we're going to build up a few different variations on that. Let's go to the original layer again at the top. Swipe on it and use the option to duplicate. Now the bottom one out of the two, let's go to Gaussian Blur and let's do the same, but let's go a lot further now. Let's go all the way up to 20, let's go all the way up to 22.5%, like so. And then let's go to our layers one more time, the actual main original one. Swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And then go to the bottom one out of the two, go to Gaussian Blur again, and this one's going to be a little one again, roughly around about 2.5%. And now we're going to go to, to our layers within underneath the firework. Let's swipe the very big blurry one to the left and duplicate it one more time and drag it above the others. And then tap on that and use the option of Add, which should really start to then add in the final little punches within there just to add and make sure that they nicely glow in the sky there. And let's add in some subtle lighting then on our Ferris wheel based on the fireworks going off around them. So let's collapse our layers down for the fireworks like so. Let's go back into our layers and then find our little pods all running around the outside here. And now what I want to do is I want to create a new layer to put all the highlights on just in case I want to adjust them afterwards. So I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to tap on it and make sure it's clipped to the ring of all the different pods. And now essentially what I want to do is, is add a yellow highlight, a white highlight and a red highlight. So I'm going to continue with my soft airbrush. So go back to your brush library, airbrushing and soft airbrush. Reduce the brush size. We're probably going to want to go quite small with it, maybe around about 3%. And you want to look at the angle in which the fireworks is coming and just add in a little highlight on top of our little pods here that are all facing that firework. So those three there pretty much. And then we have to have a look at where the white is coming from. So hit this one and this one mainly. So I'm going to switch out to the white now. And then just highlight the top edge of this little pod here. Another one here as well. And another one here as well. Like so. And then let's switch to the red and then repeat the process for these three pods here. So just the right hand side this time. And the red looks really good when it starts to get painted on here because it's super nice and punchy. Looks really good. And maybe very softly you can go in a circular motion and just spread that color out even more. And don't forget the bottom edge of the pod as well. So let's go back and add in some more color on either one of those as well. They are also gonna have some nice light hit them and let's then also reflect that on the other side. So let's switch back to yellow and just add in some yellow on the pod as well. And the yellow is a little bit different. We want to try and be a bit sparing with it because it's quite a bright color. So it might take away slightly, but otherwise we should end up with a lovely little set of pods all highlighted based on these night sky that's going on around it. And now if I pinch out with two fingers and I put my pen on the top and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, drop a like down below, helps the channel out an awful lot. And if you're new here, I post Procreate content every single week. So if you'd like some tutorials to follow along with, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you get notified about all my new videos. 
As always, be sure to share your designs with me on Instagram and TikTok. The links to both are in the description down below. Make sure to tag me in them so I don't lose them in my feed. And as always, a huge shout out to my patrons. I'll throw their names up on the screen now. If you want to get some exclusive tutorials every single month, as well as access to my Facebook group that's exclusive to patrons and extra benefits on my Discord server, hit the link in the description down below and show your support. And I'll see you in the next one.